My name is Shalin, and today I will talk to you about my recent work on how to perform comprehensive and efficient workload compression. This is joint work with Anya, my advisor Paris, Jeff Norton, and Shati Spiglas. So benchmarking and performance tuning has been at the core of database system design, deployment, and development. A general purpose benchmarking framework has several benefits, such as continuous performance and correctness tracking. This allows us to compare the historical performance of systems and workloads over time. It helps identify regression by allowing easy tracking of performance numbers and alerting the developers for potential slowdown. And finally, it gives us a way to compare different systems where users can choose different workloads and identify which system serves their needs best. The very first step to perform benchmarking is to identify what workload is used for benchmarking. However, currently the most common means of generating benchmark workloads is to either perform a random sample or use a standardized workload such as TPCH or SSP. Further, there is also no known technique on how we can create custom benchmarks to satisfy certain constraints, such as the running time of the workload. In this paper, we take the first step towards our overall goal of allowing users to find benchmarking workloads that are representative of their production workloads, but at the same time provide high coverage. The main contribution of the paper is the following. First, before we are able to generate a representative and high coverage workload, we formally define what these metrics are and formalize the problem of workload selection as an optimization problem. Second, we propose a novel algorithm that provides robust guarantees for the generated benchmark workload that works well in practice. Since the problem is hard, our algorithm finds an approximate workload that is close to the optimal solution. And finally, we perform an extensive empirical evaluation. Before I present the main algorithm and ideas, let us look at the overall architecture of the system. The input to the workload summarizer is a set of query logs that contains information about the query that have already been executed by the production system. Using the query logs, we extract different type of features from the logs. These features are derived from the SQL syntax of the query as well as the execution statistics of the query. Using the extracted features, our algorithm generates a subset of the input as the summarized workload that is further used by the benchmarking framework. Let me now show you some concrete examples of features that we extract. We define two types of features. The first is known as categorical features. These are features that are derived from the SQL text of the query by parsing it. For instance, for the three queries shown here, we extract four categorical features such as function calls, group by attributes, order by attributes, etc. For each query, the table on the left shows the extracted feature values. For example, for function call feature, we can see that Q1 contains average and max, Q2 contains account start, and Q3 contains no function calls. The second type of feature extracted are the numeric features. These features are primarily derived from the execution statistics of the query that are present in the log. For the example above, we extract six numerical features such as execution time, planning time, CPU time, etc. The table on the middle left shows the values derived from the logs. To take care of the sparsity of the domain of the numeric values, we normalize the value for each feature. This is done by creating a histogram of the feature values, where the number of buckets in the histogram is a configurable parameter. For example, in the lower left table, we fix a bucket size of 10 for the histogram and then map each attribute value to one of the text 10 buckets by normalizing it. Let us formally define the metrics next. The first metric we define is that of a coverage. So suppose S is a summarized workload that is a subset of the input workload W. Then for each feature F, we define the coverage as the fraction of feature values present in the input that are also present in the summary. Coverage is a value that lies between zero and one, and ideally we want it to be as large as possible. The overall coverage is defined as the average of the coverage value over all features under consideration. The second metric that we define is the notion of representativity. Given a workload W, it induces a discrete distribution over the feature values present in W across all features. These distributions can be interpreted probabilistically, which allows us to define the distance between distributions. 
So given a summary workload S and the input workload W, we define the representativity as the total variation distance between the distribution induced by the input workload and the summary workload. Representativity is also a value between zero and one, and ideally we want it to be as high as possible. So the first way to generate a summary is to pick a workload that mimics this input distribution as closely as possible. Such a summary is said to be highly representative, but the problem is that it can miss outliers, which leads to low coverage. The second way to generate a summary is to pick one query of each type so that we cover all possible feature values that we see in the input. Such a summary is said to have high coverage. And now we can show that there is an inherent tension between these two metrics. We can construct examples where maximizing coverage minimizes the representativity and vice versa. So in order to develop efficient algorithms, there are several desirable characteristics. The first two properties are that the algorithm should be able to generate a summary that has a high coverage as well as high representativity. The third characteristic we would like to see is that of customizability. The algorithm should allow the users to control the trade-off between the two metrics. Fourth, the algorithm should be able to incorporate user constraints such as the size of the summary, the execution time of the summary, etc. And finally, we want the algorithm to be scalable so that it can handle millions of queries as input. So our key idea is to cast the original objective function into a new objective as shown above. Here, gamma is a parameter that controls the trade-off between the two metrics. When gamma is close to zero, the function optimizes for coverage, and when gamma is close to one, we optimize for representativity. This transformation allows us to develop a greedy algorithm that has a subquadratic complexity as compared to known algorithms in the space, such as K-Medoids and hierarchical clustering that have quadratic complexity. Next, let me show you some experimental results. We compared the running time of our algorithm with other baselines such as K-Medoids, hierarchical clustering, and random sampling. We use a production workload from F1, which is a database engine used at Google. The graph above shows the running time of different algorithms when using different types of categorical and numeric features. Because all clustering-based algorithms have quadratic time complexity, they are unscalable to large workloads in contrast to our algorithm. The second graph above shows the metrics for coverage and representativity for all the baselines and the same input workload as on the last slide. Here, we fix the size of the summary to be 100. As the graph shows, K-medoids and hierarchical clustering have good coverage score, but poor representativity. Random sampling, on the other hand, has very high representativity, but it suffers from poor coverage. Our algorithm achieves the best of both the worlds, where we get good coverage and only marginally sacrifice representativity. The final experiment I wish to highlight is index recommendation. SQL Server has a feature where the engine can recommend indexes based on the provided input. However, as the workload becomes large, the, comp the computation required to recommend indexes also becomes expensive. So in this experiment, we apply our summarization algorithm to generate a succinct summary of the input that is fed into SQL Server instead of the entire workload. Since the summary is small, we expect the recommendation to be very fast without any drop in the quality of the indexes recommended. We use TPCH workload that contains 2200 queries. Here are the experimental results. The orange line shows the time required to generate indexes and how much speed up we get from those indexes when using the entire workload. SQL Server requires about six minutes to process the input and generate some indexes. The optimal is highlighted in light green is when the input provided are the 12 templates of TPCH. And as you can see, our algorithm is very close to the optimal indexes and generates them within one minute. There are many more experiments and I encourage you to look at our paper. There are lots of exciting problems that remain unsolved. The first is how we can perform summarization for transactional workloads. This is challenging because we need to take the data contention into account. The second exciting problem is how to take query interference into account, which is, a com which is common when analytical queries are run in the cloud. In this case, the queries may run faster or slower depending on which queries execute concurrently 
which makes this problem challenging.